Welcome, I'm Brian Ross, Chief Investigative Correspondent for ABC News. And today, a chilling videotape that may provide clues to the Al-Qaeda terrorists being trained to attack the United States. It is a tape obtained by ABC News showing what can only be described as a graduation ceremony for a school for terror, with the graduates being sent on suicide missions to Europe and the United States. The ceremony was held just nine days ago in a large field at the end of a dirt road. A Pakistani journalist says he was invited to attend and take pictures as some 300 recruits, including some very young boys, were supposedly sent off on suicide missions. The Taliban military commander, Mansur Dadullah, whose brother was killed by the U.S. last month, arrived in what appeared to be a local police car. Surrounded by a heavy guard, Dadullah then delivered his version of a commencement address, a warning to the West. Americans, Canadians, British and Germans come here to Afghanistan from faraway places, he said. Why shouldn't we go after them? We should perform suicide attacks and, God willing, he said, destroy their establishments in their own country. Instead of applause, the recruits waved white flags, a Taliban symbol. It doesn't take many uh, who are willing to actually do it and able to slip through the net and get into the United States or England to cause a lot of damage. The recruits appeared to be organized in teams or brigades, each assigned to a different country. This team was described as being responsible for suicide attacks on America. This group was being sent to Canada. These men were described as going to Germany. The man heading the British attack seemed to know English. Let me say something about that why we are going along with my team to have a suicide attack in Britain. After all the speeches, there was a reception line with the military commander Dadullah greeting and hugging the men as they passed through the line, many with their faces showing, faces which no doubt will now be of great interest to U.S. and European intelligence agencies. The official reaction from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security is officials are studying what we reported, but they say they know of no credible, imminent threat to the United States. One U.S. intelligence official dismissed it all as propaganda, jihadist bravado, as he called it. Joining me now is ABC News senior investigative producer Chris Isham, who is directly involved in reporting this story and obtaining the tape. And Chris, I think to start with, how do we get a tape like this? I think people watching this would like to know. Well, Brian, we've, as you know, we've worked over the years with a, a number of Pakistani journalists, uh, some of whom are living in the tribal areas, who work, who live and come in those areas, and uh, we talk to them, and from time to time they give us a call and they say, look, we have this tape or that tape, and it, it's really a network of people, and they're very brave, and they take great risks, and this it came through those channels. And in this case, the fact that he was invited to attend, does that suggest to you this is more propaganda than real threat? Well, I think it's a mix. I think clearly it's propaganda in the sense that they want to get these pictures out. They want people to see these pictures. Uh, as to how real the threat is, these people are clearly capable of doing things. Uh, they've been trained. Uh, so I think it's a mix. I think it's propaganda, but I think it's also a threat that we should be taking seriously. Now, the Taliban military commander, uh, Mansour, who there was speaking, uh, his role in this suggests that it's more Taliban than al-Qaeda? Well, he is a Taliban commander. Uh, there's no question about that. But uh, Mullah Dadullah and his brother, who was killed uh, several weeks ago, and his brother Mansour, who has now taken over as operational commander, these guys don't see the difference between what they do and what al-Qaeda does. They're, the two organizations have become much more interlinked and intertwined. And I think this is an example of it, particularly when he issues the call to these guys to go back out to the West and attack targets in the West. Because before the Taliban we thought of as simply attacking U.S. and right. NATO forces in Afghanistan. This is an expansion then of their role. That's right, that's right. And now what's the interesting footnote about uh, this Dadullah? Well, the interesting footnote about this character is that he was actually in custody in Afghanistan up until several months ago when he was exchanged for an Italian journalist who was being held by Dadullah's people. Uh, they did an exchange, it was very controversial at the time. Uh, and in, in doing that, they released this man who now is going on to run the operation. And in running this operation, they have great aspirations, but do they really have the ability, you think, to get through uh, security nets in Europe and the U.S. And, and carry out their supposed suicide missions? Well, one thing we've seen recently is there have been reports of individuals coming out of these camps with traveling with German passports or English passports that have been detained on the border uh, with documents and that sort of thing. So I think we're seeing already the exfiltration 
of some of these people back into the West. And I think, you know, you have to assume that they're, that they're capable of conducting attacks. With someone carrying a German passport, what would access be to the United States? Well, with a German passport, he wouldn't need a visa. So it would be rather easy for him to, to obtain entry into the United States. Chris, thank you very much.